Well, greetings, friends, in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm Pastor Tal Lewis, and it is good to be with you today as we gather as a community for a time of prayer together. This day, like so many other days that have gone before, is not what we had envisioned this day looking like. As a part of the National Day of Prayer, we were planning to be gathered for a breakfast this morning, for a noon gathering of prayer, just what would have been a couple of hours ago, and an evening community service of prayer tonight. But instead, we gather today via technology, uh, through live stream, as a community of faith, to still gather together for this time of prayer. The general flow for our prayer time this afternoon will be as follows. A presenter will come and share an invitation to pray for a specific area, along with any thoughts that they wish to share, and then they will lead us in prayer for that area of need. A little trans transition music will then be played to give you some additional time for personal reflection and prayer. Throughout this service, please feel free to use the comment section below to list any prayer needs that you might have that you would desire to share today. We invite you to list your home church if you desire, and we would also ask that if you are requesting prayer for someone else, that you only use their first name uh, and then list the need as you would. As we begin, friends, hear this call to prayer from Philippians 4.4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Let's begin with a moment of prayer, friends. Almighty and gracious God, for this period of time, help us to step aside from the pace of the day. Help us, Lord, to be still and know that you are God. Hear the prayers of our hearts as we gather together in this new way and move in our lives, Lord, as only you can do. For it is in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Good afternoon, I'm Dennis Hanwell, I'm the mayor of the city of Medina, and I wanted to thank each of the pastors here and those that are watching uh, remotely uh, for joining in, in today's service. I also want to thank each of you. Uh, many of you have reached out to me uh, to pray for, for the city, for our staff, for our first responders, and uh, those prayers are heartwarming and much appreciated. I was reluctant, uh, as I'm sure each of the pastors were, uh, with a number of the changes that have had to been made uh, to protect those that come to our churches. I was reluctant to not have our National Day of Prayer uh, festivities that we have. Uh, for 10 years as mayor, and probably for nearly that long as the police chief, eight to 10 of those years, um, I took part in the National Day of Prayer services. And yet for the benefit of the public, it seemed the right decision not to still have the events and the gatherings, albeit they were exempted uh, under the religious exemptions. That, that being said, the more I contemplated that, I did not want Satan to think he prevailed in our community. 
and that's why I reached out to Pastor Tal and to each of you and ask you if we'd be willing, uh, each of us, to come to this small service and show Satan that the church is still alive and well in Medina. Uh, we're still fighting for Christ in Medina, and God bless each and every one of you for what you're doing day in and day out. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm Deacon Paul Kipstool from St. Francis Xavier Parish and also the Director of Catholic Charities Social Action Office for Wayne, Ashland, and Medina Counties. I'm going to be offering a prayer for local government, which is very near and dear to my heart. At one time, I was on City Council back in Garfield Heights, and I'm the son of a firefighter in Garfield Heights. So I know what it is to be involved in local government. It can be long hours with seemingly thankless issues. Back in my day, I dealt with landfill, interstate construction, noise barriers, things that, that we often overlook, but are very, very important to the existence of our local communities. And so we pray. Good and gracious God, you have revealed your glory to all nations. God of power and might, wisdom and justice, through you, authority is rightly administered, laws are enacted, and judgment is decreed. We pray today for our county commissioners and county officials, for our mayor and his administration, for township trustees, for city council members, charged with enacting and administering laws that protect us. We pray for our judges, municipal and county, who interpret laws fairly. We pray for members of the sheriff's department, police officers, and fire and life support services departments who work diligently to keep us safe. Pour forth your blessing upon them. In their position, may they be guided to serve faithfully, consider discussion and opinions on all sides of an issue, and treat others fairly and respectfully in carrying out their civic responsibilities and duties. Amen. Good afternoon. I am David Wallover, the senior pastor at Harvest Presbyterian Church here in Medina. And it is my privilege to join my colleagues in leading us in prayer. My role is to pray and lead us in prayer for our state and federal leaders. We are commanded in scripture to pray for those in authority. It pleases God. The Apostle Paul instructs his protege, Timothy, that the people of God should be praying for those in authority that we may enjoy peace. 
And so with that in mind, I ask you to join with me as we bow our heads and hearts in prayer for the leaders of our state and the leaders of our federal government. Let's pray. <clears throat> Lord God, you are the sovereign. You are the king. You are just and you are wise. Your providence is at times inscrutable. We would probably not be honest if we, any of us said we understood why you are using this virus. It's confusing. It's disorienting. Our instincts are off. Our assumptions are brought to the surface and we have to rethink and relearn what to do and how to do it. To guide us through these times, you have by your providence placed men and women in positions of leadership and authority to deliberate. We have seen almost daily press briefings led by our governor, Governor DeWine and Dr. Acton our public health director, as well as Lieutenant Governor Husted. We are tempted, Father, as citizens first to criticize. Please temper that instinct, temper that assumption. Grant us peaceful hearts and charitable dispositions we pray for the governor and the lieutenant governor. We pray for the legislature and our state judicatory. We pray that you would give them wisdom and patience and determination. We thank you for the ways that they have led us in good faith, whether or not we agree with every decision. We ask you to support them and encourage them in their work. Give them good rest that they may endure these times in strength, physically, as well as spiritually. We pray likewise for those in leadership in our federal government. We do pray for the president and the vice president, for the leaders of our health and health care services, those who are endeavoring to test and discover and build data. An arduous task under the best of circumstances, never mind when there is a crisis at hand. We pray that you would give them wisdom and patience and endurance as well. We pray that as a nation, we would repent of the polarization that is so prevalent among us. We pray that you would restrain partisan politics <clears throat> and cheap criticisms. We pray that as a nation, as a society, as a culture, we would rise above partisanship and find common ground we ask for your peace. We ask for a unity that we don't deserve, but that we need. And we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, and for his sake. Amen. My name is Pastor Bowie, one of the pastors here at Medina United Methodist Church, serving this great congregation. I have been tasked with praying for our world leaders. Let us now pray together to our God. God, we come to you and we lift up all the world leaders, those in political positions, those in uh, nonprofits, those in any position, O oh God, of oh leadership across this earth that seeks to lead in this troublesome time. 
One of my mentors told me, God, that there is no mentor for this situation, God. We're all encountering this situation anew. We are excited. We are terrified. We are filled with despair. We're filled with so many things, God, but we ask that your peace and your power would flow through leadership all across this earth. Allow our leadership across the earth to be creative. We lift up all prime ministers, all presidents, all those, God, who are elected or are in some leadership capacity across this earth. God, give them calm, give them wisdom, give them discernment, give them a deeper connection with you that they might, through their leadership, help us to connect with your power and your endless wisdom. God, please encourage them, strengthen them, empower them to do things that they cannot do by themselves and let them know that they can truly do all things through Christ who strengthens them. I'm sure at different times, God, they wonder if they can do this or that or if they can lead through this difficult time, but show them who you've made them to be. Use them in peculiar ways that people would be cared for and would get hope and would get empowerment and transformation through the leaders we have across the earth. God, we don't know all their names, but we know that you know their names. So we ask, God, that you would speak to them, encourage them, empower them to be transformational leaders in this peculiar time that they might know anew of the power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit, and the saving grace of Jesus Christ our Lord. God, please move that there might be great testimonies all across the earth from world leaders that either come to you for the first time or get renewed faith in you, O oh God. God, we pray all these things in the awesome, wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We now come to the time where we think of our families, the families of our community. At, uh, during normal circumstances, uh, things in families can be very complicated and challenging as well as full of blessing and joy. Uh, and in these, this time of uh, difficulty and, and uh, turmoil with the coronavirus, it, uh, it, it is certainly a time where we need to lift up the needs of our family. So many different dynamics, uh, so many uh, different seasons of life. Uh, so many places for God's grace to be experienced and needed. Uh, I hope that, uh, that our prayer would be like that of David in Psalm 101. He says, I will sing of your love and justice. To you, Lord, I will sing praise. I will be careful to lead a blameless life. When will you come to me? I will conduct the affairs of my house with a blameless heart. And that's our prayer today, that the people in our community, in our families, will conduct their affairs, the affairs of their house, with a, with a blameless heart. Let's pray together. Precious Father God, we thank you that you have placed us in families, that you have cared for us in our relational needs, and you've given children to parents, that we have uh, all of these relationships that, uh, that in, a, in great circumstances are, are certainly blessed and, and a blessing. 
And Lord, I pray that wherever we find ourselves and the families of our community, I, I pray that, that we can be a blessing to those around us. I pray for grandparents, uh, perhaps uh, isolated to more than others. And Lord, we pray for their physical health, obviously. We pray also that you would encourage and strengthen them uh, emotionally. And, and Lord, that they can continue to be an influence in their families. We pray for parents, for the uh, relationships between husbands and wives and uh, parents and children between siblings. Lord, when, when people are uh, stuck in under one roof for a long, long time, it certainly can cause uh, strife and discord. And Lord, we know that you are a God of peace. And so we pray that you would bring peace and harmony. We pray that you would give wisdom to, uh, to uh, moms and dads to know how to, uh, to parent during this unprecedented time. Lord, we, we pray that, uh, that you would continue to move and work in the uh, mental health of uh, the people of our of our families lord there there's uh, already uh, unprecedented times of anxiety and depression and and that's ramped up even more now and we just pray that you would bring hope and healing and peace in the midst of our of our families lord we thank you again for these relationships that we have we we thank you for the blessing that we can be to others we pray that that as we as we interact, uh, maybe with distance, we interact with the people in our neighborhoods, uh, and that, that you, would, uh, you would help uh, each of our families to be a blessing to those around us. Lord, we thank you for your spirit that is not socially distant, but continues to move and work in the midst of uh, the relationships and families that we have. We, uh, we lift these folks to you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm Father Mike Osberg from St. Francis Xavier Catholic Parish here in Medina, and I'm here to offer a prayer for those who have been affected in education, specifically our teachers and our parents and students. It is fitting that we pray for them during this National Teachers Appreciation Week for all that they do. And I was reminded earlier today that at the beginning of the stay-at-home order, somebody after a couple of days, uh, one of the parents was online and social media and said that they didn't understand the math they were trying to help their child with and they didn't understand how to teach English and they, th they thought the teacher should be paid one billion dollars a year and just the other night Jimmy Fallon on his uh, comedic show sang a song that teachers should be paid one billion dollars a day <laughs> so I think we're all seeing the value of of teachers in our schools and so it's very fitting that we uh, ask God's blessing upon them and all those who have been affected in these last number of weeks in the area of education. Lord our God and Father, we pray for all those involved in education during this pandemic. We remember administrators and principals, students and teachers, school support staff, bus drivers, cafeteria workers, custodians, and crossing guards. And we pray for any of those who have become unemployed during this pandemic. We ask strength on those parents and grandparents who have become teachers at home during this unsettling time. Jesus, master teacher, inspire those who instruct others, those who seek wisdom through learning, and those who imitate your kindness and love for others with respect, patience, and understanding. Amen.
I now would like to lift up possibly the greatest heroes during this time, those who are getting the greatest brunt of this crisis, the medical professionals. Many of you have watched videos on all types of social media of what they're going through day in and day out. The nurses, the doctors, the STNAs, the nurses' aides, the medical assistants, all those who are going through this difficult time, let's lift them up in prayer and help them in any way that we can during this time, that they know that they are not alone, that they are loved, and that we as a world are with them and support them. Let us pray together. God, we come and we have seen the pain, the agony, the tears, the frustration, the depression, the anxiety, the stress on the families and on the people that are our medical professionals, the unsung heroes, those who are getting a strong majority of the pain, of the action, of the things that are happening, oh God. And we even lift up the chaplains that are part of those med medical professional teams, God. Lift up the doctors, the nurses, all those, God, who are seeking to care for people that are alone from their families because with this peculiar disease, the coronavirus, people are dying alone. And sometimes, God, the last face they see is that doctor, that nurse that is desperately trying to use all they can to do whatever they can to save the life and they may or may not know that they can't do anything else and they do the best they can and they see people passing away again and again and again, God, and we know that must have a tremendous effect on their soul, their emotions, their spirit, and their faith. God, we ask that you would revive them, strengthen them, encourage them, let them know that the world is with them. Give them peculiar strength, God, but give them time to rest, and as they sleep, allow them to actually sleep and wake up refreshed and not be so worried and restless about what they have to deal with the next shift or the next minute or the next hour. Give them peculiar strength and allow your loving balm and your grace to be with them, to comfort them when possibly no one understands except them what they're going through. Let them know, oh God, that they are loved. You hear their groan. You hear their pain. You hear their agony. You hear their frustration. Let them know that you are with them. That you love them. And that you will carry them through. Give them peculiar intelligence and wisdom to do whatever they can, what they have. And let them know that you will do the rest, oh God. And help us, lastly, God, not just clap for these medical professionals, but help them in any way that we can in, safe, in a safe way by taking care of ourselves so we're not one of those patients, but also helping them with masks or whatever we can help them with to make their burden just a little lighter. God, we pray all these things in the loving, caring, redemptive name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good afternoon, my name is Arthur Ruffin and I am the pastor of Second Baptist Church here in the city of Medina. Uh, it is an honor to be here this afternoon with uh, my fellow clergy as we come uh, on this National Day of Prayer and lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, I've been asked to pray for the churches, not only here in this city, but all over the entire world. 
Let us pray. Eternal God, we want to come to say thank you for just allowing us to come before your throne once again. Um, we lift up today, God, all the churches that are open in your name, even in times like these when um, there's no manuscript on, on how to preach or how to leave, lead your people, uh, even in a situation like this. So we pray for fresh anointing of your spirit to touch each leader that you have called to, to lead your people, to preach your word, uh, that you would give us um, knowledge and you would give us understanding, that you would give us wisdom as we still continue to proclaim your word, even when the church building is closed. Um, for we know today that the building is not the church, that we are the church and that the building is just the place where we go to worship you. But we know that wherever we are, we know that you are with us because we represent the body of Christ. So we pray for each leader, um, God, during the week uh, and on Sunday, uh, and as they prepare to feed your flock, uh, that you would encourage them with the word today that can encourage your people, um, not only those that are saved, but those that are unsaved, uh, that they may have an opportunity to come and get to know you and to know that you are the truth and the light and that there is no other way. So we pray, God, that even during this time, uh, that your spirit, your blessings will stay with us as we continue to try to do the things that you have equipped us to do. So enlighten us through your word, enlighten us through our walk and through our prayers uh, on what it is that you want us to do. For we trust you by faith. Uh, even when we don't see what's going on, uh, you told us to trust you by faith. So we pray, God, that you would just strengthen our faith, that you would encourage our walk with you. And that when this is all said and done, that we may understand it better by and by. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. As we continue in our time of prayer together, we know that we have covered many areas of prayer for many things going on in the world around us during these days. We also know, friends, that there are many things going on in your individual lives, in your personal lives. So we want to, number one, acknowledge that, but number two, give you an opportunity to lift, lift those uh, before the throne of God uh, at this time. Again, we invite you to share any concerns that we can join you in praying over uh, in the comment section below. And you also know you can do so by contacting your, your local church as well. But we want to jo join you in praying for those needs. I'm going to invite Elaine to uh, pray for a, a minute or two uh, as we come before the throne of grace uh, on our own. Uh, and then I'll step back in and close us uh, with this time of our prayer time together.
Almighty and gracious God, Lord, we know that uh, the needs are many. The needs are many around the world. The needs are many in our individual lives. So in this time, Lord, we take an opportunity to lift our concerns to you. You have told us, Lord, in your word to cast our cares to you, upon you, because you care for us. And we rejoice in that today. We rejoice in knowing that we are not alone. We rejoice in knowing that, uh, that we have brothers and sisters in Christ that walk with us. But we also rejoice in knowing that you are God. And that you care deeply for each and every one of us. So as we lift these varied concerns to your throne, we do so in faith. We do so in trust. Knowing that you alone are God and that there is none like you. Knowing that you care deeply. Knowing that you love us dearly. We thank you for your presence with us in these uh, unusual days. And know, Lord, that we'll trust you each and every step in all that's ahead. For it's in the name of your Son, Jesus, that we pray. And all those who agreed with the prayer said, Amen. Amen. Friends, I want to take a moment and apologize for the technical difficulties that we had, visually speaking. Although maybe that means you just didn't have to look at our faces uh, during this time of prayer. So that might be an amen right there. Uh, but uh, it sounds like the audio has been just fine. So uh, we rejoice in that. But we appreciate your patience. We uh, offer these words of benediction. Uh, leaving off where we started with a writing from Philippians. So hear these words, friends. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just... Whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, writes Paul, and the God of peace will be with you. God bless, friends. <laughs>